Okay, everyone, today I have a beginner friendly body weight workout for you that is gonna focus on foundational movements and positions that we build upon in a lot of different exercises. So think squat, lunge, spinal rotation, plank, side plank, glute bridge, some prone work. We're really gonna nail the basics, dial in on proper form so that you can build upon those in future workouts. We're gonna focus on one exercise at a time. I will give you the exercise and then we will do it three times using an interval structure of 30 seconds of work, 15 seconds of rest. Once you've done it three times, we rest for 30 seconds and then we move on to the next exercise. Again, it's a body weight workout, so no equipment is needed. That being said, you definitely want a mat because while we will start standing, um, the whole second half of the workout is going to be down on the mat. As with all workouts, you want to make sure you're properly warmed up beforehand and always listen to your body, modifying or stopping as needed. Again, this is beginner friendly. These are pretty accessible movements. And as we go, I will tell you how you can advance or tone them down. Before we get to the workout, I'm going to give you a quick preview of all the movements so that you know what to expect. And lastly, if you're new to my channel, I don't play music in the background because I want you to be able to listen to whatever you like. So if you don't have a playlist queued up, you might want to get that going. And with all that said, let's get to a preview of the exercises. we're going to do is a squat and the biggest mistake I see with squats is people leading with the knees and trying to stay upright through the torso. The movement does not initiate with your knees bending forward. I do not want them to come way far in front of your toes. Instead the movement initiates with the hip hinge, okay? So as my hips hinge back, my torso goes forward maintaining that shape, the knees bend and that brings me down into my squat. So I want you to think about that movement pattern the first 30 seconds we do this. Hands can stay in front of your chest or you can reach them up as you lower up to you. Let's go. Feet are about hips distance apart, maybe a little wider. We hinge, weight is in the heels, but you're not lifting up through your toes. I want you to ground through all corners of your feet so the big toes are down, we're not collapsing into our arches. Hip hinge and up. Now as I hinge, I'm not changing the shape of my spine, so I'm not hunching forward. I'm also not creating an excessive arch in the low back. Neutral spine. Rest. Okay, we're gonna do that twice more. Now, if you're like, I got this, I know what a squat is, you can advance it by adding in a pulse at the bottom. Otherwise, I just want you to think about the basic movement and I'm gonna, gonna give you some more tips. Let's go. So now this round, I want you to notice what's going on with your knees. Look down at them. Are they caving to the inside of your big toe? I don't want that to happen. Think about having them track in line with your middle to pinky toes. As you rise out of this, you're pushing your heels into the ground. Squeeze your seat at the top. Abdominals are engaged. And rest. Okay, we're gonna do it one more time. Again, if you want a challenge, add a pulse at the bottom. Otherwise, just stick with that basic movement. Let's go. So I've talked a lot about squeezing your seat at the top. It's important, but I don't want you to dump into the low back when you do that. So think glute squeeze, abdominals engage. So it's almost like you're coming into a standing plank at the top of this. All right, 30 seconds to rest. 
Our next exercise is going to be a back lunge and we are gonna add in a twist. We're gonna isolate the right leg the whole time, all three intervals before moving to the left. So this is gonna be the position. Think I dream of genie arms, okay? One forearm stacked on top of the other and press them together so that you're creating tension and you feel that mid-back connection. Right foot is going to stay planted. Down, twist, center, stand. Right leg is your base leg the whole time. Let's go, left foot steps back, you're in a lunge. Twist over that right thigh, bring it back to center, stand at the top. Now when you lunge down, your right knee should not be jutting out in front of the toes, so it stays stacked over that heel. Fifteen seconds to rest. Now what I want you to focus on this second time through is your left hip. So when you are in your lunge and you start to twist, I don't want you to dump that back hip down. I want you to think of keeping your hips parallel to the floor. So left foot steps back, pick your left hip up a smidge. Now keep it at that height, twist, come back through center and stand. So when you keep your hips level like that, you might find that the rotation isn't as big and that's okay because the rotation should come just from your rib cage, not through your pelvic bone. And rest. So we're gonna do that one more time and then we will switch legs. If the upper body position is getting to be too much, feel free to have your hands loosely in front of you. Right foot planted. Left foot steps back, you're in a split lunge. Tight twist, keep your hips level. Bring it back through center, stand. Weight is in your right heel. I want you to exhale on the twist. It's gonna help you find that connection to your obliques that are creating that rotation. And done. Okay, 30 seconds, and then we're just gonna repeat that three times, isolating the left leg. And I wanna just talk about the position of the torso. So in this lunge that we're doing, the back knee is bent, and our torso is pretty upright, so it's gonna be a quad dominant lunge. Sometimes we lunge with a big hinge forward in the torso, which will activate the back side of the leg a little more. Upright like this, quads more the focus. All right, I want you to switch which arm is on top in your stack. Squeeze them together, left foot is gonna stay planted, right foot will step back. Let's go, step that right foot back, hips stay level, twist over the left side, back through center, stand. When you stand, squeeze into the left side seat. And again, I'm not worried about how big the rotation is. If it's really big, chances are you're compensating by bringing that pelvis out of neutral, which I don't want. And rest, 15 seconds here. I'm gonna do that twice more. So when you bring your arms here, just check. I want you to make sure that you're not rounded through the upper back. So your scapula are at neutral and we're stabilizing them there. Let's go, right foot steps back, twist, back through center, stand. So you're maintaining that shoulder position as you go through this exercise. If the rotation is too much, you can always just focus on your back lunge. And rest. Okay, we're just gonna do that one more time and then we'll move on. Stack those forearms, squeeze them together. Left foot planted. Right foot steps back into your split lunge. Hips are level. Exhale as you twist over the left. Bring it back through center, stand. All 
Under 10 seconds to go. And done, 30 seconds to rest. We're gonna make our way down to the floor. Next exercise is going to be a glute bridge. So as you come down to the ground, you want your knees bent. Your feet are gonna be about hips distance apart or a little narrower. And your heels are going to be about a ruler's distance from your bum. You don't want them so close that your knees are jutting out in front of the ankles when we lift up. Arms are gonna be down by your side and we're gonna lift and lower through those hips. Now you're wide across your upper back here. We're gonna drive the heels into the floor as we pick those hips up. Let's go, you press lift through the hips and then lower them back down. I want you to lift on an exhale because I want you to maintain the abdominal connection as your hips lift. So the main mover, it's not your low back. You're not arching into your spine like this, okay? So exhale, lift. Drive the heels into the floor. Squeeze into the bum. And rest. We're going to do that twice more. If you want a challenge, you can add in a pulse at the top. Up to you. I'm just going to stick in the main range of motion. Now, as you lift the hips up this round, I want you to think of reaching your knees long. So reach the knees to the wall at your feet that sensation of that long kind of femur bone is gonna help us activate through the glutes. Drive the heels down, squeeze the seat lower, lift without hyperextending into that low back. So remember, abdominal connection. And rest. All right, we're just gonna do that one more time. Again, if you need something more, you're adding in a pulse at the top. Press those arms down into the ground, wide across your shoulders. Let's go, 30 seconds. Now your adductors, your inner thighs are active here. So as you lift the hips, I want you to notice, is there any outward or inward wiggling of the knees? Think of tracking them straight forward. And done, 30 seconds to rest. So glutes are not off the hook. You're gonna mirror me. We're gonna focus on the right side of our body coming into a side plank position. We're gonna keep this bottom right knee down. And then from here, we're gonna find a lifted position and this top leg is going to extend out straight. So we'll be in this position and we're gonna lift and lower that top leg. But if that is too much, you keep that foot on the floor, okay? So without actually moving it, I want you to think of pulling this right elbow towards your feet a little bit so that we're active through the lats. We're not sinking into this shoulder socket, okay? This is a shoulder exercise too. Now I want you to lift your hips up, squeezing into that bottom right butt cheek, and then make sure your hips are stacked one on top of the other as this top left leg lifts and lowers. If this is too much, I just want you to keep that top foot planted down firmly on the floor. Maybe you reach your top arm to the ceiling. Spine is long, so your neck is long. Squeeze in the bottom right seat and lower down. Come off that bottom shoulder for a second. We're gonna do that twice more. Right forearm finds the mat. Right knee is down, left leg is long. Lift the hips up, make sure your hips are stacked one on top of the other so that you're not rolling open. From there, if you're adding in that top leg abduction, you lift up, you lower it down. It does not have to be big, okay? If you kick up too high, you're gonna compensate by moving your pelvis, and I don't want that. Your pelvis stays in the same position. It's a lift and a lower coming from the hip joint. Lower down, come off that bottom shoulder for a second. We're just going to do that one more time and then we will switch sides. Right forearm down, right knee down, left leg is long, hips are square, active through the lats, lift up, maybe top arm to the ceiling. That top leg lifts and lowers. So this is a tough one. 
Keep that bottom foot on the floor if you need to. So we're working the side of our body. We think of side planks as an oblique exercise, and it absolutely is. It's also a shoulder exercise, though, and a glutes exercise. And adding this top leg, you're going to feel this outer hip. Ooh, come down. So you have 30 seconds. Bend both knees. Let's take a counter stretch. So that right arm is just going to sweep up and over. That should feel nice. So we're going to do the same thing for our left side. So let's get ready for our left side. Left forearm down, you're mirroring me. Left knee down, right leg is extended long. Hips are stacked one on top of the other. We're not sinking into this bottom shoulder. So I want you to press the ground away, long neutral neck. Active through the lats, so think of creating tension as if you could pull the elbow towards your hip. Maybe top arm reaches towards the ceiling. If you need support, you can keep it on the floor. Let's lift up, make sure hips are stacked, and then that top right leg is gonna lift and lower. It is not a big lift and lower, because I want you to keep your pelvis stable and neutral. Any shoulder issues, have that top hand lightly on the floor for support. And if you need to keep this top foot on the ground, do so. Take it down, get off that bottom shoulder for a second. We're gonna do that twice more. So I really want you to focus on the engagement of your bottom butt cheek on this, okay? Getting into the glutes. Your top leg absolutely working too as we do that abduction. But when you lift up, I want you to think, squeeze that left butt cheek. And then from here, maintain that squeeze as we lift and lower the top leg. Tune your attention to your rib cage. Make sure it is not puffing open. So there's a heaviness across the front of it as we maintain that abdominal connection. Long neck, so picture you could reach the top of your head towards the wall. And down, get off that bottom shoulder for a second. Okay, just one more time. One more time, you got this. You can always keep your top foot planted. Left forearm down, left knee down, right foot on the floor. Stack your hips, maybe top arm reaches, lift up. Top leg lifts and lowers. If that is too much, keep it firmly on the floor. Now, make sure this top right hip isn't rolling back. So take a peek quickly. You might need to pull it forward. And then once you do, stop looking at it. And I want a long neutral neck. <laughs> Final few seconds. And down, let's take that counter stretch, bend your knees, left arm reaches up and over. So we're gonna come to the floor here. Your legs are about hips distance apart, but if you are tight through the hips and the low back, you might wanna separate them a little wider to relieve tension here. Now you want equal weight in your hip bones and your pubic bone here. So we're trying to find a neutral spine, which means your abdominals need to be engaged. Now I want your elbows bent and I want your palms kind of to the outside of your shoulders here. So we're gonna lift and lower the upper body. So pressing the hands down into the mat, it's a lift through your upper back and then you're gonna lower down. We will add on to this in the next two rounds, but I just want you to focus on this small lift. Now, when I'm lifting, it's my thoracic spine that is doing the moving. I'm not getting into the low back. I'm keeping my low back at neutral. So I want you to picture you're rolling a marble with your nose, so kind of push it away, lift up, gazes at the edge of your mat, and then lower down, nose hovers. and rest. Now, when you did that, I want you to notice what was going on with your shoulders. They're not rounded forward. You're creating this broadness across the collarbones. If you're up for the challenge, we're going to add in a hold at the top. So a little extension through the cervical and thoracic spine as you lift up. Hold at the top. Can you lift your hands off the mat, place them back down, and then lower? If that is too much, then just keep your hands down on the mat the whole time like we did the first time. Lift, plant, and lower. Again, you have that broadness across your collarbones. Now you're not craning the neck, so your gaze just comes to the edge of your mat. Rest.
All right, reach those legs long. Again, you're maintaining whoop, a gentle squeeze of the glutes. Brought across those collarbones. Nose hovers over the mat, and let's go. So again, a little lift, gaze at the back of the mat. Maybe you lift your hands off, lower them back down, whole upper body lowers. Now picture, there's a gentle lift of your navel away from the mat, so we maintain the engagement of our abdominal wall. The lift is coming from just under the shoulder blades, okay? You're not dumping into your low back. And done. Press it back into a quick child's pose here. So we're going to do this forearm plank from our knees as we get into the second and third interval. If you want to lift those knees, go for it. Now in this forearm plank, I want you to have parallel forearms. If when you do a plank, you usually come here. It's not that this is a wrong position. It's just that so often when I see people do their hands in this sort of triangle, I notice an internal rotation of their shoulders and we don't want that. We want a broadness across our collarbones and engagement through the lats. So notice the difference. Okay, so parallel forearms. Think of pulling the elbows towards your knees without actually moving them so we have that lat engagement. We're brought across the collarbones, hips are lowered, and hold. Now, they're lowered, but think neutral spine. In a neutral spine, you do have a little curvature to that low back, so you're not in a tucked position, but you're also not letting your low back sink towards the floor. So you have gentle engagement through the obliques and that transverse abdominus holding you into place. Long neck and make sure you're breathing through this. Inhaling, exhaling deep into the lower abdominals and rest, come back. All right, now this second time, if you'd like to lift into a full plank, go for it, but let's get into it from our knees. So forearms down in parallel, brought across the collarbones, knees inch back, hold. Now, if you want to advance this, press the balls of your feet in towards the mat, and without changing your pelvis much, you just lift those knees up, you're still in neutral, you hold here. If you're in the full plank, think of squeezing your quads as if you could lift them off of your kneecaps, glutes fire gently. Don't hold your breath. And rest. Okay, we're gonna do that just one more time and then you are done. Again, we all start on our knees. I like to enter a full plank from the knees because it's gonna keep your hips at the proper height so that they're not piked up. Let's go. So maybe you stay on your knees, long neck. So think of this sensation of length across the back of your neck here. Don't let your breath get caught in your shoulders. So you're breathing into the abdominals. And then if you want to advance it, press the balls of your feet into the floor and just lift your knees up. Don't sink into your shoulders, although they are certainly working, right? And done. Knees down, butt back. Find a child's pose. It might feel good to flip those palms up towards the ceiling. Hope you enjoyed that workout. If you did, you know the drill. Give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I post new workouts here every Monday. And if you're looking for more beginner-friendly workouts, I've linked to a bunch in this video description. I will see you next week.